Greetings folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben You here for another Legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com and our deck list comes to us from Garrett Y who wanted me to play their Initiative Thought Lash deck. Um, and I know that after they submitted this donation deck list they did 5-0 with it so it should be around in the deck list dump somewhere. Our general plan is going to be to exile our entire library with a card like Paradigm Shift or Thought Lash, and then to win via Thassa's Oracle. And we're going to turn having no library into an actively good thing here. Now, both of these cards work slightly differently, so like, let's highlight some of those differences. Paradigm Shift does exile all cards from your library, but you do shuffle your graveyard into your library. So this may or may not immediately put Thassa's Oracle into a kill range. That said, we are going to have other things around that have blue devotion pips, so it's not like it's just going to be like two or bust here. The other card here is Thought Lash. Now, this has a cumulative upkeep of exiling the top card of your library, so that's, you know, one, then two, then three, and so forth. And when you don't play Thought Lash's cumulative upkeep, you do have to sacrifice it, uh, and you exile all cards from your library. Um, you can exile the top card of your library to prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to you. And this is where we get into the part of why the initiative is actually in the deck list. Something that I experimented with in last Tuesday's video was using energy field to keep from losing the initiative. Well, the thought lash is supposed to work the same way. Your opponent's swinging in for five, five thought lash activations, and then bam, you still have the initiative. And the initiative is obviously very strong. And the final part of the undercity dungeon that you get for taking the initiative lets you look at the top 10 cards for a creature. Hmm, maybe there's a very specific creature that we often need to be finding. Um, so Thought Lash is going to work very well with the initiative, both in that it can help you keep the initiative, and then the initiative can help you find the Thassa's Oracle for the kill. Um, generally speaking, this is kind of what's going on with the deck list. I will be playing with a card that I've never played with before today, and that is Fair Feywild Caretaker, which takes the initiative, and if you have the initiative at your end step, you get a 1-1 one, one blue fairy dragon creature token with flying, which is your chump blocker so that you can hold the initiative. Um, from what I've been told, despite the fact that this is one more mana, this tends to be a much better card than Aarakocris. Um, As far as the sideboard goes, we have a bunch of kind of regular mono blue cards here, although we do have a couple of things that are very targeted for specific decks, such as Hercules Recall, and we can have our good little friend Spellskite to protect our various initiative creatures or our chalice or whatever it is that we need to protect. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and hop into today's video. If you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. All right, round one opening hand has a bunch of mana and a thought lash, but like really has no plan to do anything. Let's ship this and try to find a more reasonable hand. Ah, uh, I'm not excited about it. I guess this is a keep. I think I just keep my mana here and pitch the Feywild Caretaker, kind of hoping to win this game via combo. On a, oh, we're playing against Jax. My opponent is almost certainly on a combo deck of some kind. Chalice on zero, Chalice on one. Chalice on zero, Chalice on one. I think Chalice on one, not knowing which matchup it is. See if I die for that decision. Delta? Okay. This is at least somewhat fair. Maybe Doomsday? All right, we've got the exile my own library portion of the deck going strong. All right, and my Chalice has resolved. Definitely smells like Doomsday, yeah. All right, so this is an oldie. You look at the top five cards of your library, and you can essentially put them on top in any order, or you can pay one life to throw those cards on the bottom and try again, and you can do that as many times as you want. So our opponent is going to probably look for something that allows them to cast a Doomsday next turn. Um, so they're 
ideal probably oh wow they just kept the first set that's horrifying um my hand sure isn't good guess i'll play one of these call it a turn i guess next turn i'm technically holding up an Ottawara, but that's not exactly feeling great all right i am definitely good with the fair side of the deck here all right i don't actually know the text on this card Okay, this is reasonable. I have blue, blue, blue for it. Let's go ahead and put that on Merfolk for Thassa's Oracle later, if we end up needing that. And play a Jace Wielder of Mysteries. I do have ways to exile my entire library here, so like, should this resolve? I can probably win with it in the not-too-distant future. For now, though, I'll just go ahead and mill myself, take a new card here, there is an Ancient Tomb. Oh, and Synergy. We have milled a Malevolent Hermit, uh, which is actually, like, really good here, I suppose. Uh, I'll put in a Thought Lash. I got the wrong read on my opponent here. The one next one damage that would be dealt to you. Yeah, that's fine. All right, um, so this will go ahead and do it for us here. So I'll Cumulative Upkeep. Exile the top card in my library. And then I'll ex activate this a whole bunch of times. Okay, and my opponent has seen the writing on the wall after I exiled about half of my library, and uh, then go ahead and conceded. So we're potentially playing against like blue black show and tell reanimator. I'm not actually going to be that great at stopping opposing combos, so my plan is largely going to be just win myself. Um. I don't know how much I want a big, dumb, expensive card like this in this matchup. Like, I am going to shy away from the initiative stuff and work towards doing some things that stop my opponent from actively comboing off. I think I will assume that there's reanimation stuff in there, either in game one or game two. Like, if I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'll just kind of accept that. And I'll play some Brazen Borrowers as sort of a safety net for something getting into play. Um, These are cards. I don't know if this hand's actually good. A little awkward in terms of mana. Go ahead and ship this. <laughs> um, untapped land. Probably thing to put under... Romox, Dallas still have Flusterstorm. Um, maybe Flusterstorm is the thing that goes, actually. Uh, Flusterstorm might be the thing that goes under the Chromox. Not 100% sure about how to play this deck. The Lotus Petal. That punishes me for putting back the 2-mana card versus Thought Lash. Play this as a land... I guess I'm now settling in for a longer game. I don't know. I can just put the Flusterstorm under there. Hope. Alice buys me time. No, let's keep the Fluster. Let's keep the Fluster. I'm going to accept that Brainstorm. All right. Now we'll go ahead and Fluster that Force of Will. And hope this Chalice actually does something meaningful. All right. Oh, it's got another land drop. You'd see some fair stuff like Baleful Strix start hitting the battlefield, and we do. I hope my Chalice has bought me a decent amount of time. Let's, uh, let's go maybe Wizard this time. Now we're looking to draw, like, a Paradigm Shift or whatever. Taking one from Strix is no big deal. We're just looking to not die to something big and dumb. Like, two, two damage a turn is forever. Yeah, sure. We're going to use one of these in the fair way. So we're going to look at our top two, which is our devotion to blue. All right, um, paradigm shift can go on top of my library. And then next turn, I can cast a paradigm shift and then Thassa's Oracle the following turn. And that should, in theory, lead me to victory. Yes, we can poke for one. Put our opponent to 17. Up to the paradigm shift. Right, it has resolved. 
Now things can go wrong for me. So for example, my opponent could put an Archon of Cruelty into play, force me to discard the Stasis Oracle, and then I die. I'm at 12 from Little Peck Attack. Alright, and that is that is the card that I wanted to draw here. So let's attempt a Thassa's Oracle kill. Oh, Dress Down. That doesn't get countered by an instant or sorcery. Uh, uh, yeah. Fair. Fair. Ugh. Okay. Alright, I haven't seen any reanimation type stuff yet. I guess that means I pull those. Say a couple of Aarakocra Sneak or Feywild Caretaker. I guess generically I should be putting Cavern on Wizard. It does hit Caretaker and Thassa's Oracle. These are so much better versus Baleful Strix. But these are so, so much more castable. I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to settle on those. I think I'm going to play the card that's better as the game goes long, because I really only want the initiative stuff if the game is going long. Uh, turn 1, Ottawara, Romox, probably Imprint, Brazen Borrower, Chalice, and have Fluster backup for it. Vegas. Alright, Petal. City. Romox. Yeah, Imprint, Brazen Borrower. Gamma Chalice. It's... Like, history is repeating itself all over again. Deja vu. And then we see if I do actual meaningful amounts of damage with this card. <laughs> Alright. Opponent's got a land drop, but presumably nothing to do on turn one here. Another fluster. That's not really what I'm looking for right now. I just want to make land drops. Because, like, I can still definitely just lose to my opponent having a turn three show and tell or whatever. Holding this mana up so that I have kind of an active mana leak forever and a fluster storm is pretty respectable. Let's battle. Uh, this is this is chip damage, but like I've I've got some amount of protection here, and even if I use this as a counter spell, it's like still very reasonable on the backside because it protects me. <laughs> <laughs> we have gotten the ggs from Jax. oh yeah that they said those were their first three draw steps after getting locked under chalice this format's great sometimes today's video is sponsored by moxfield.com this is the place where i keep all of my deck lists and i really love the fact that i can sort these just so efficiently into folders because i I make a lot of deck lists, folks, and knowing like where these decks are is very valuable for me, as well as my viewers who are trying to hunt down, you know, my EDH decks, legacy decks, or whatever. I love this place as a deck hosting website, and please consider checking them out. Okay, I think I'm going to keep my round two opening hand here. I won't be great against Wasteland, but like I have a lot of disruption if I'm playing against some sort of combo deck. Um, and Windswept Heath, though, probably not super indicative of a combo deck. This is more likely something like Elves. I am, I am, I think, going to just Force of Will this card. It's not like it's that good, but I need to buy some time to get this Chalice online in hopes that the Chalice can actually do something. Um, because Allosaurus Shepherd is going to shut off my counter spells. So I want to use those cards while I have the chance to use them before they become dead. Yep, yeah, no, just, just no. Urge Druid is fine. If I can stick this chalice and kind of get that down, I've got a good chance at being able to make it to a higher mana amount to do something cool with Thassa's Oracle. All right, chalice is around. I am a little low on resources, but hopefully, like, three pieces of interaction here slows down my opponent's deck enough that I can buy some time. I do have to worry about something like Natural Order just kind of killing me out of nowhere. Woohoo. Um, I think I just play Th Asa's Oracle here as something that blocks and fixes my next draw or two. 
I don't think I want either one of those cards. I'm just going to say no here. Like, I will need another blue land drop at some point for this Jace. I don't think I just take it immediately. Maybe I do. There's a Thought Lash. Any blue land will just produce, uh, like, lethal with Jace. I am accordingly going to just go ahead and play this out here. I'm not going to bother attacking. This doesn't really do anything for me. Like, I'm almost never winning with combat damage, like, with how this board looks. Cumulative upkeep, let's sacrifice some cards. Yes. All right, there is a Lotus Petal. That should do it. I guess technically I want to exile my whole library with Thought Lash first, right? Let's do that. Okay, I'll put like 50 instances of Thought Lash on the stack. And then we'll go ahead and cast Jace. Yes, I will I will use a couple of those damage shields to uh prevent my ancient tomb from dealing damage to me. And there is the concession. So we're not that great at dealing with my opponent here. My initiative stuff is going to be pretty bad in this matchup. Like, Elves, generally speaking, is good against the initiative. So the more of these cards I can board out, the better. Um, I'll play a couple more counter spells. They're not the best, because again, that jerk. Um, Elsa or Shepard is real good. And I might just play, like, a couple of spell skites as blockers or a couple of brazen borrowers as additional interaction. We'll call that good. Initiative cards not quite pulling their weight yet here. But what does this hand do? Romox Brazen Borrower. Romox Flusterstorm. Play Chalice on one. Play Jace on turn two. Prey? Fine. It has a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of fast mana. And I have like five loyalty after I activate it. All right. I'm in. This up on my upkeep. I don't need that. Ooh, you jerk. All right, so I still think I want to play Jace on turn two. Oh. All right. Romox, imprint a Fluster Storm. I'm still going to, I think, imprint this Brazen Borrower. On the off chance, on the off off chance that that card leaves play, I am going to go ahead and still play this Chalice on one. It's not like this is a Brainstorm deck since this is a Chalice deck, so holding that extra card in my hand doesn't do me a lot of good. And, like, Flusterstorm I think is the only one drop that I actually have that this kind of runs into. Yeah, yeah, ignore my Chalice. Make me sad. So the good news here is that there's not enough power in play to just immediately kill my Jace is really what I was hoping for. We will cast Jace. I will mill myself. And I guess I will play this tap land. Yeah, the counter spells just like so don't line up well versus this card. And would have been so good on the play. We'll see. Like I can still just top deck a Thought Lash. Ooh, no, I'm so dead. Yeah. I do dig this art though. That is a fantastic alternative. I accept my death gracefully. Um, again, don't have too much else that we can do in terms of sideboarding here. Being on the play will help a bit, but the fact that the Alisar Shepherd itself is uncounterable is so rough. Um, yeah, this is this is gonna excuse me be a keep. I don't have a turn one chalice. But I, I've got some pretty good stuff here. All right, I am going to counter this. I think I'm pitching the Thought Lash in the hopes of doing Paradigm Shift and Thassa's Oracle in a single turn. That is currently my plan. All right, let's cast this Chalice. And now we're hoping for a land drop to just win next turn. It's really awkward if I miss the land drop. Is like this potentially starts going to the graveyard and makes life horrible for me. Heck yeah. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That will go on wizard. Go two mana. 
for a paradigm shift that'll put two cards back into my library. And then that is exactly enough for the Thassa's Oracle win, and we have gotten the GG in the chat. Um, I'm really happy to win that one. I thought that was going to be a pretty tough matchup. Round three, we're 2-0. and oh. I don't think this hand has enough persistent mana to be keepable. Uh, yeah, I'm very unsure about what to put back here. Because Malevolent Herbund is really nice if I need to fight against counterspells, and otherwise I really don't want that. It feels like I'm mostly trying to win this game via combo. I'm going to put back the Aarakocra Sneak, but I'm going to fully accept that my, that might be me undervaluing the initiative in this deck, as all of my wins so far have been with the Thassa's Oracle and Jace side of the deck. I'm just very unsure whether or not I am valuing those cards properly. But it feels kind of like I want to play Malevolent Hermit out and then work towards Paradigm Shift and Thassa's Oracle in the same turn. All right, are we combo? Are we initiative? What are we doing over here? All right, this is going to be a Moon Stompy deck list. I am so cold to a Blood Moon right now. Oh, very cold. Hmm. Uh-huh. Mm hmm Good news is we'll probably die fast. Now, if I find an initiative creature, I can, uh, like, find a basic and kind of get myself out of this situation. But I need both an initiative and a starting basic land. Okay. Okay, this is something. Paradigm Shift probably has to go under here. More likely that I can Thought Lash into Thassa's Oracle than that I can Thassa's Oracle and Thought Lash in the same turn cycle. Goodbye, Paradigm Shift. Play a basic mountain. And play a 2-1. Like, it's a relatively good 2-1. It, in theory, trades with Goblin Rabble Master. And then, like, backside blocks tokens. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So my opponent will trade away their first... Goblin Rabble Master, and then... Yeah, you have to attack each turn of Able. That is indeed how that works. That is one of the, I guess, downsides of playing two Goblin Rabble Masters, but you usually don't care if you have, like, two Goblin Rabble Masters in play, because it's just, like, absolute murder. All right, let's play a Hermit. Or, I guess, Benevolent Geist is the name of the backside. I guess I'm going to play this. I don't think I play this as a land here. So my new plan is potentially to Ottawara that Blood Moon out of play. Uh, the Fury kills my Geist, and I'm dead next turn? I think with no outs? Like, this is just 10 damage here. So like, the Fury alone, for example, is just lethal. So like, even if I bounce like one of these two things, the other one just kills me. Rough. I have four basic islands in my deck. That's not bad. Um, initiative cards are probably okay here. The go wide aspect of my opponent's deck isn't something that I'm super thrilled about here. But like the first thing that's going for my deck is Chalice. Like I could play Chalice on zero when I am on the play specifically, but that feels worse than just having some of this other stuff here. I'm going to board in a Force of Negation for lock pieces, Brazen Borrower for the same reason, and I have one more card. Dress Down technically does some stuff versus a Fury or a Caves of Chaos Adventurer. I think I'll fill my deck by playing one of those. Okay, what are we doing? Not having enough blue mana is the answer. That Cavern goes on Wizard and casts all of these things, but doing a lot of damage to myself in process. I'm just going to for a better hand here. Uh, this is a turn 2 kill. I would say this uh, qualifies as better. Well, let's keep that. Pitch the cavern. And I guess hope I don't get Blood Mooned on turn 1. Actually, that only slows me down a turn, because I can still make triple blue. Wild. Alright, land drop. Lotus Petal. Ass. Don't moon me? Alright, sure, sure, sure. We just want to see like a Goblin Rabble Master. Like we want, we want to see something that does punchies. 
Chaos on zero is fine. I was on the play here. Okay, there is a moon effect. So that slows me down a turn because this doesn't tap for two mana. But that's all it slows me down. And this is a perfectly reasonable draw here. Uh, this can stop some of the scariest things that could happen to me. But again, if I use this, then I'm not doing some of the other things that... I'm not, I'm not like, going as fast as I possibly could. Okay, I can wait a turn to go off with protection. I'm not sure that I need to. I, I guess it's pretty free to do so, though. Like, I'm not taking any damage as of right now. Um, let's just go ahead and pass the turn. I don't want to randomly lose to some, like, dead gone type card. Or a pyroblast, I guess. Play a threat. No attack. A brazen borrower. I'm under no pressure. I don't have to go for this. I think I'm just going to continue to try and make my opponent's life miserable. Pass the turn. In their upkeep. Uh, actually, maybe maybe not. Maybe not. Because I want them to tap mana. I think in their, like, end step, I bounce their chrome mox if they don't do anything. Ooh. They were just F6'd there. They might not actually have anything. I, I guess it doesn't matter if they have anything. I just win now. Uh, I don't need to cast that. I, in fact, don't want to. I don't actually have enough blue mana with that around. I guess I should be attacking now. I actively want that thing dead. I just don't want to lose to a Pyroblast. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to kill my opponent with damage if they don't do anything. Yeah, this is totally fine. I drop down to 18. Feels incredibly manipulative. My opponent didn't want to play their Chrome Mox either. Yeah, I, I think I just bash them until they die. And once I have quadruple blue, I go for it. Otherwise, like, I'm ahead on board. I have the much superior position. I don't think my opponent can cast spells without fear of dying. Yeah, this is... I could, I could have switched to this plan sooner, I think. Um, but this is fine. All right, opponent's at eight. I straight up also like, could play the Thassa's Oracle just as another thing to lock with, but that feels unnecessary. Fury's good, but this is actually going to help me, oddly enough. Yeah, because this thing dying is going to help me play around like the one thing that I was trying to play around. I'll happily take two here, make my land drop, play the backside of this. So now, non-creature spells I control can't be countered. That helps with resolving at least some of these cards. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. That looks so smart. I will take two from this Magus. Cast this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can just cast this as a draw four that baits a counter. Gives up my Lotus Petal? Maybe that's not good. Um... Yeah, maybe that's not good. I'll just need this to win. I just just tap out for a threat. Just tap out for a threat. Thank you. Like if you if you see me in spirit guide me and lotus petal me, like I'll accept that. But like, I have been trying to find a a window all game to do something like what I'm about to do. All right. Paradigm shift into Thassa's Oracle, uh, and that gets me the win. I maybe played that game too patiently, like, I would have jammed earlier, but it felt like what I was doing was very safe. So I could do a weird leveling thing, where now that I know that my opponent is playing Pyroblasts, I could play, like, Flusterstorm or Chalice of the Void to help out with that. On the draw, my initiative creatures are going to be considerably worse against opposing creature starts, but my initiative creatures are some of my easiest ways for me to win if I get Blood Mooned when I'm on the draw. I think I'm much less interested in Dress Down on the draw. Play a Fluster as one more tiny layer of protection. I keep, keep the initiative creatures, question mark, question mark, question mark. 
This is a turn one Aarakocra Sneak. Costs me three damage and everything else in my hand. This will be superb against a Blood Moon start from my opponent. It will die, straight up die to a Chalice on zero. I'm going to keep it. Like, there's real risk here. But I think this hand's good. Yeah, see, this is what I'm fucking talking about. Let's go. Does that change things? I don't think so. Blue, blue, blue is really hard for Jace right now. So, Lotus Petal. Chrome Mox. Uh, like, Jace can go under. Play this as a land. Play Chrome Mox. I think I imprint Thought Lash. And keep Brazen Borrower as the thing that I can do afterwards. Because I can guaranteed... Well, I guess I can guaranteed do both next turn. Yeah, I do keep the Thought Lash, actually. Alright. Aarakocra Sneak. Grab an island. Pass the turn. All I need is... Like, to dodge, like... I guess... I guess Fury would be really bad for me. Because then I can't take back the initiative. I dodge most other removal spells. Alright, cool. I will forge up my creature here. I would like to know whether or not I'm going to get Pyroblasted. Ah, uh, well, I guess I could get Pyroblasted either way. Weird spot. Um, I think I go ahead and attack. Dip on in there. Alright, opponent goes to 17. I will drop Thought Lash, which hopefully protects my initiative. It does. Nice. I imagine this is GG. Like, if they didn't have the Pyroblast there, um, life's pretty awful for my opponent. Like, you can you can have your Fable looting all you want, but I get to hold the initiative. Activate that twice. All right, good stuff. We'll go ahead and trap my opponent and work on finishing them off. Uh, something weird has happened. Okay. I don't know why I am no longer... Okay. So you just always yield to that, too. Uh, Magic Online has gotten super screwy. Hopefully I can finish out this game and then just, like, do a reboot or something. All right. Bash in for three. Have Hardcast Force of Will plus activating Bot Lash as, like, things that I can do. I can't really see myself losing from here. All right, opponent got the chance to get rid of a bunch of mana. All right, so let's go... One, two, three, four. You get your treasure. And I prevent all that damage. I don't care about that right now. Um, maybe I do care about that. No, I just, I don't. I guess this is only three power. All right, if this is only three power, I guess I do care about that. I don't know, that might be a mistake. Okay. So be it. All right, I've drawn another card. Exile some cards for Thought Lash. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not anywhere close to actually casting this. I guess I will just go ahead and put that into play. Bash in for three. Put my opponent to six. All at a turn. Okay, this is all fine. Uh, sure, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. I will end up taking no damage. And we're more or less good to go here. Still got like 30-something cards in my library, so I shouldn't have to worry about like decking myself with Thought Lash or anything. I think I just take the creature with the bigger butt here. Alright, exile a couple cards for Thought Lash. And should be more than good here. Opponent goes to three. And I have multiple sources of lethal damage next turn. And I can just present myself from losing losing the initiative. Okay, yeah. Uh, GG's. We're three and zero oh now. Wow. All right, round four. We're three and zero. Oh. I have ways to exile my library, but no payoff card here. I don't think I want to keep this hand. I think I want to fish at least a little bit. I hey. I'm one mana away from like turn three. Aracocris. Sneak. If I get that mana, I get Aarakocra Sneak into Thought Lash. And use a Force of Will to get through the early turns. 
Not the biggest fan here. I think I keep. Alright, Flooded Strand. Probably playing against Delver. Probably playing against Delver. Um, not really easily in a position to flip this and just trade with Delver. I'm going to force and pitch the Malevolent Hermit. I don't really love my hand versus Delver. If this gets wastelanded, I just die. Literally anything. The good news is if I can make it out of these early turns, I have a bunch of big booty flyers that dodge Lightning Bolt. It's resolved, but I think my opponent has a counter spell because they paused for a very long time while thinking about whether or not my spell was going to resolve. Um, I play this tapped this turn. That's the one I'm supposed to play Ancient Tomb and pass. Like, I'd rather have the Ancient Tomb get wastelanded than the blue source right now. It's awkward whether or not I just, like, jam next turn into days. I try to play around days. I definitely play around days now. All right, cool. Okay, there's there's counter spells over there. So let's Chromox. I will imprint the Paradigm Shift, and I will allow. Actually, let's tap differently. Let's tap. Leave the island up. I will allow my Aarakocra sneak to get countered. Okay. Yeah, that was expected. Let's pitch there a Force of Will. Sure. Once fetching end of turn. Sure, if that makes sense. If I'm about to get Merktide Regented, not a very big one if I am. Ooh, I think I do that before Thought Lash. This does a lot of damage versus like the, the brainstorms and stuff that really would power up Dragon Rage Channeler. Bolt is fine. Ooh, old Art Bobble. Okay, there's a Chalice in play, which probably is in play for the rest of the game. There's one brazen bar over there somewhere. My opponent will only find it if I hype it up, though. Do you fly? You don't fly. You get dazed right now. Let's play Thought Lash instead. See if this resolves. I'd like to play this around daze, because I know, like, two of the Force of Wills have already been used. Hey, it's another Force of Will. But at this point, a second creature would be a pretty big deal. Then I can't take and hold the initiative. Um, it would basically have to be Merktide Regent, though. Like, another Delver or Dragon Rage Channeler is off the table. Although, um, Brazen Borrower is kind of uh, air quotes and out in both directions. EI is fine. They topped one of their cards, which to me means something like either a Wasteland or a Counterspell. Only one force of will remaining. L, yeah. Wizard! I unfortunately do have to take two damage from my ancient tomb here, but you, know, you can't have it all. Orc, wizard. Kind of an odd creature pairing. Grab an island. I've already played my land drop. That end step, I will get myself a blocker for this dragon rage channeler. So basically, at any point, my opponent can find Brazen Borrower, and it beats me in a number of different ways. Right, Mystic Sanctuary finds EEI, finds Lightning Bolt. There is a Chalice of the Void in play. Do you have the Brazen Borrower already? Come on. Come on. Come on. <sighs> they always have it. Fucking always have the Brazen Borrower. Speaking of always having it, that's fucking rude. Do they unholy heat that out of the way, attack me for three, and lightning bolt me and kill me? Double check that doesn't have flying, yeah. That is beyond disappointing. I don't really love two for wanting myself with Force of Will here. Just gonna be, like, the Force of Wills are just gonna be so bad versus Pyroblasts unless I already have a Chalice in play. Part of me wants to just, like, play some fucking spell skites. I want Brazen Borrower. I need two more cards. Bluster's not bad. Bluster, Force of Negation, Spellskite are all perfectly reasonable. I guess I really only want the Spellskite if I also have a resolved Chalice. I don't know. It does other things sometimes. Um, let's play a couple of Flusters. Okay. 
This hand has a lot of mana and multiple initiative creatures. It, in theory, tries to cast one on turn two. We'll run into days, but... I don't know. Let's try it. I haven't kept a hand that looks quite like this one that just attempts to play the initiative game. I think conceptually that's because, like, this deck is much worse at playing the initiative game than, say, like, the mono-white deck list. So, like, I don't necessarily want to put myself in that situation. I'm going to die real fast if this initiative stuff doesn't work out for me. Oh, hoo -hoo, no. All right. Attempt Eric Akra Sneak. Nice. Uh, grab a basic past the turn. This creature does beat Delver in combat. Or at least holds the ground versus it. Alright. The Delver player with the initiative is horrifying. I get Feywild Caretaker to try to help with that. But I am in at least single Ancient Tomb territory. Double Ancient Tomb territory if I want to play around days. And Pyroblast is going to stomp me here. I think I am supposed to play around days here, as excruciatingly painful as that is. I have so, so little agency in this game. I think I have to take what edges that I can. Like, I have five lands in hand. Is it another Pyroblast? I think I auto-scoop to another Pyroblast. Delver becomes a 5-5 five five in this turn cycle, and then I get trapped. Yeah. Um, I can technically Ottawara it out of play. I will have taken five. Uh, now that's... No. Nope. 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 All right, final round here. We're three and one. This opening hand doesn't really have a plan. Accordingly, I will be mulliganing. Chalice of the Void is a plan, I guess. So, Chrome Box, put Seagate under it. Play Chalice on Wizard. Cast Chalice. Hands a keep. I think I get rid of the second chalice, chalice and keep Thought Lash so that I have some draws that will just, like, more or less immediately win me the game. That goes on Wizard Blind, and we'll attempt the chalice. Find out real quick whether or not, like, our opening hand is going to line up well against what our opponent is doing. All right, we are playing against a blue deck. We know that much. All right, now I have to think about some types here. Wizard hits pretty much everything except Eric Hakra's sneak. I would have to draw another land for anyway. I can already cast that. I already have blue, blue. I guess this can go on rogue. This is uh, potentially going to be a staring contest for a few turns. All right, opponent's got something now. Oh, tropical island. Okay, so we are potentially playing against some sort of like four color control deck list with life from the loam that also has mox diamond? Question mark. The mox diamond is weird. Mox diamond's really weird. Not necessarily bad weird, just weird. Oh, wastelands are off for me. Wasteland makes it so that if my opponent finds a life from the loam, I largely just concede to that. Not pay life for that. Now, it's unclear whether or not my opponent has their next land drop as of right now. Okay, another EI. That probably lets them hit their land drop. Yep, there is a Misty. Um, and I'm now in a very large amount of trouble. I don't think I play out a blind Thought Lash here. I would much rather use this to play an initiative creature, um, given the option. Uh, it's sort of a shame here. Chalice isn't actually all that good versus, like, blue expressive iteration deck lists. Yeah. Like, I will... I will... Uh, yeah. Oh, Urza Saga as well. Uh, this is an exceptionally greedy mana base stapled together by Ox Diamond, I guess. I'm I'm not willing to play out Thought Lash here. I'll begrudgingly do it on my next turn if I have to, but I, I lose out on a lot of options if I throw Thought Lash into play. 
That is the third naturally drawn wasteland. I think I'm just dead. Enskin Boo? Yeah. Alright. Didn't play around the third naturally drawn wasteland. Uh, didn't really think that deck was going to be playing that many of them. I don't really regret not playing the Thought Lash. Because, like, I wanted to be able to do this sort of thing. I think my opponent is far enough ahead here where I am comfortable conceding. I don't really know that I have many cards for this matchup. I can Hercules recall some tokens that they play. My chalices are not stellar. Like it's going to miss EIs, Uros, Minsk and Boos, Life from the Loams, like a lot of the cards that are going to actually kill me. Don't mind Force of Negation. Blusterstorm is going to miss some really important stuff, like Minsk and Boo. The fairy, if my opponent has white as well. Yeah, I, I think I get rid of these and try to fill the deck with some other cards. I don't know about that one. May just be better to play a brazen borrower that can bounce a hamster token or whatever. This has two persistent mana, three total mana. This has some problems, like the Malevolent Hermit isn't amazing when I'm squeezed on mana. And like, maybe I'm just supposed to mulligan into a hand that has more mana sources, because like, my opponent is probably playing four wastelands from the look of their deck list, or very close to it. And like, if these get wastelanded, I'm just in awful shape. Maybe I'm supposed to mulligan for an initiative hand, like a re reasonable initiative hand in this matchup, rather than keep a combo-oriented hand that can try to go off with backup. Alright, let's see what you got. Garden Island. Sure, this is all fine thus far. Play out Atawara. Play Lotus Petal. Play Hermit. And now, in theory, I would like to get to 5 mana to be able to Paradigm Shift, Thassa's Oracle with backup. See whether or not that actually ends up being realistic. 3 mana for True Name Nemesis, sure. Uh, so here's the situation. I can absolutely YOLO go for a win this turn. And if my opponent has Force of Will, I lose. But if I go for something safer, like a Thought Lash base kill, I lose both my Lotus Petal and my Ottawara in process of doing that, and I will eat it really hard to a Force of Will anyway. I think I just have to accept that. I think I play the Thought Lash based line. This line is just, like, much worse versus my opponent randomly having a Wasteland. Oh, it didn't have anything I could have won. So it goes. Yeah, sure. Alright. So, I'll exile a couple of cards to play around, uh, or to, like, save myself the life. Yeah, but I'm I'm so far behind. Like, if I would have gone for the win there... Like, I would have had it because their interaction was Pyroblast. And then I opened myself up to Pyroblast by doing the pass the turn line. Ugh. Alright. So I will not block that, and then the Thought Lash saves my butt here. I believe my line is just Paradigm Shift this turn and put these three cards back into my library. Most of the time I draw a Mana Source, which lets me Thassa's Oracle with Malevolent Hermit back up next turn. Or alternatively, Flusterstorm back up if that ends up being better for some reason. I don't know how big their Urza Saga package is going to be. They might Pithing Needle Malevolent Hermit. Nope, more Mox Diamond. Uh, expressive Iteration is fine. Not that I can really do anything about it. Tropical Island to Exile, so they make their land drop. They're going in for something else. As an aside, my opponent's deck list seems very well geared towards, like, fighting current legacy problems. Like, aggressive iteration helps to make up for the Mox Diamond card disadvantage, and the Mox Diamonds help to accelerate out True Name Nemesis as a way to fight versus the initiative. They are not going in on another card. Alright, I will happily take six. And 66% of the time, I draw a Mana Source here, which lets me go off with protection. Oh, there's that Mana Source. Play. Keep untapped Ottawara. This is not the safest Thassa's Oracle in the world. But opponent needs two cards here. 
Um, yes, that is acceptable. I will just flusterstorm their red elemental blast or whatever. Their lightning bolt. All right, cool. Uh, that was a very good line from my opponent that didn't end up working out. All right, good stuff. We have to do this again, though. Do I want a spell skite to help out with, like, Brazen Borrower and Lightning Bolt? Their storm does similar things, but differently. I think I'm just going to call this okay. Okay, I don't think I'm a hand of this opening hand. Like, I can make a Thassa's Oracle uncounterable, but, like, this Force of Will isn't doing a ton right now. And I'm, well, relatively vulnerable to Wasteland as well. Uh... On six, I guess. Get rid of Luster. Levelant Hermit accomplishes similar things and can be played out to do some chip damage. I don't think I use Malevolent Hermit to turbo out. Or sorry, I don't think I use Lotus Petal to turbo out this. I think this is used to turbo out Jace. Uh, yeah, let's play that land tapped this turn. All right, no Wasteland. That's good for me. If we're facing down, like, a true name or an Uro or something here. It is Uro. Uro into Wasteland would be really rough for me. Okay, cool. This is going on Wizard. And we'll go ahead and throw that down. I think I do put the Lotus Petal in play so that this um, counter ability is live. We don't really intend on using it. Brainstorm's fine. I'm hoping to draw... Uh, maybe I've changed my mind. So, like, my whole plan is resolve Jace next turn, and then cast Paradigm Shift while having Malevolent Hermit back up. Like, that's my theoretical plan to march towards victory. I don't think I attack with this and do a potential Endurance. So I can wait a turn on playing this Jace to play it with Mana Leak back up, but... Like, Red Elemental Blast or Force of Will or whatever is going to get around that still. So I think I'm just jamming here. And if this does get countered using an intensive amount of mana in some capacity, I can attack in with my 2-1. That is acceptable. I don't think I attack into Endurance. I haven't seen one yet. It's just so likely that my opponent has it. If I lose this game by 2 life, like, I accept it. Here's another land drop. Specifically, a fetch land means that my opponent can play Uro right now. Uh, but they are opting not to. Oh, well, nope, they're just going to second main. I mean, that's real good. That's real good. I think I wait till next turn. Next turn I can do this with the Malevolent Hermit active. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to be attacking with this because, like, the backside is very reasonable right now. Uh, that's actually interesting. If I cast this and my opponent lets it resolve, and then they interact with me in some other way, like a rest down, I just die. I don't know that I can keep giving them turns. They're intentionally not casting a row, which makes me think they have something. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to just ride this out until I draw an initiative creature. Let's attack with this. Initiative creature becomes the plan. I need to start dealing damage to my opponent. Alright, they go to 20... I think I play this also on Wizard, just past the turn. That is, I suppose, acceptable. I get auto wire my own creature so that they can't Brazen Borrower and start having a clock, but I think I just accept that. This is fine. All right, Life from Alone is fine as long as Wasteland doesn't get involved. Once Wasteland gets involved, I am actively scared of it. I'll take three here. This is all fine. I think this is all okay here. Go ahead and do this uncounterably. Pass the turn, and I think I go for it next turn. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to just go for it now. Like, maybe I'm just giving my opponent too many draws towards things that matter. Sure, sure, sure. Like, they have enough lands that this Malevolent Hermit isn't that much of disruption. I'm kind of hoping that they like Desperation, Uro, tap out a bunch of mana, and then like this becomes live again. Yeah. yeah. So for example, if my opponent doesn't put in a land drop here, then like the Pyroblast type cards are off. Alright, they do have a land. Two lands. I'll take that damage. I wonder if I'm supposed to just like let Uro attack, jump block, play the backside of this, and then both Paradigm, Shift, and Thassa's Oracle. 
are uncounterable. I don't know how many cards can I let them draw. How much is it to put the backside of this into play? Three mana. Kill a wizard. So I could go one, two, three. I have one, two, three, four still. I'm going to try to attack into this Uro and see if they'll block me. See if that happens. All right, it does not happen. I'm getting kind of nervous here. I'm going to go ahead and cast this Paradigm Shift. It is a red elemental blast. One has enough mana to deal with that. I think I counter this, though, and then bring this back on the other side. That way, like, top decking into a Thought Lash can be uncounterable that way. I just use Lotus Petal here. Let's go ahead and bring this back. I don't know. If I was going to play it out this way, maybe I should have just, like, let the Uro block. I don't know. The, the, the actual answer is I probably just should have, like, jammed when my opponent was on, like, two or three cards earlier. All right, there's an Urza Saga. Fine, I'm going to go ahead and take all of this damage and just hope my next draw is good. Ooh, that is a lot of incoming power. An Ottawara and Ura out of play to survive a turn. I guess go on Rogue. Leave this back, I guess. The next next turn is 100% my last turn of this game. I win it under a reasonable number of circumstances, right? Seven, seven draws that just win me the game. Uh, again, Life from the Loam is fine as long as Wasteland doesn't get involved. Don't want this to attack. Go ahead and floop that out of play there. And I know most of the things in my opponent's hand are lands. Uh, I'm not going to block here. Like, I can die to a lightning bolt to my face, but it's more important for a Thought Lash or a, what call it, a Parallax Paradigm Shift to matter. I guess Paradigm Shift doesn't actually win me the game because I have too many things in Graveyard now that Ottawara is in there. Uh, yeah, uh, let's draw Thought Lash. Yeah, this is fine. The card that it draws might not be. Okay, sure. Four for Thought Lash. Two for Thassa's Oracle. As a Flusterstorm, I am very much dead to those Urza Saga Construct tokens. Um, GG. I'm not sure. Well, actually, I am sure I didn't play that one right. I'm not sure at what point I should have like just gone all in. Like, it felt like playing conservatively and trying to wait for an initiative creature was totally fine there, but, like, my deck didn't deliver. All right, so at the end of the day, how do we feel about this one? Um, I think this one gets a thumbs up from me. Like, we didn't get there in the last two rounds. I, you know, was a little unlucky that Blue Red Delver had the Brazen Borrower despite casting uh, very limited ma uh, manipulation spells. And I feel like... My opponent's deck in the last round, like, that was very much geared to beat initiative with, like, True Name Nemesis and stuff like that was, like, pretty good against our plan B. Um, overall, I would say that the Thassa's Oracle side of this deck list felt better than the initiative side. Like, as far as, like, being a turbo initiative deck, this, this just isn't that. Like, this deck list is designed to take advantage of, like, the synergy of Thought Lash, Thought Lash and Initiative Creatures so that you take the initiative and then you don't lose it. You're not playing, like, the best Initiative Creature White Plume Adventurer, so you can't go nearly as fast as a lot of these other decks can. And some of your lands enter the battlefield tapped, which is also, like, slowing down, like, you turboing out these creatures. Um, but I like the deck building that's going on here. Like, this is a very neat deck list. And, like, as far as a hybrid deck works, like, this one is a success. Uh, anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya!